Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Um, I actually went to the border many times, and last Congress and recently did, and um, it's unfortunately that it's not a um, bipartisan issue because, you know, I'm, I'm a mother of two teenage girls, and if I would do what done to some of these children, I would be in jail for child neglect. And these kids deserve the same level of protection as everyone else, and we're creating perverse incentives. And unfortunately, I think the pendulum has swung too far with this administration because they really wanted to quickly push kids out of care that they don't have overwhelmed shelters versus worrying about safety. Because when I was, when several years ago to Texas, to some of the um, shelters, and I think people who work there was very disturbed that proper background checks were not used, and COVID was used as a pretense to do that. And I don't know, Ms. Rodas, if, you, if you're aware or not, or any of you that did it stop because we don't have COVID pandemic now. I still did background check. I mean, it was an inexcusable to use COVID and not really to worry about safety of the children. But you know, if this guidance and this field guidance is still in place, so now they're doing better checks. Are you aware, any of you? Thank you, Congresswoman. To my knowledge, all of the field guidance that was put in place is still in place, which means that background checks for household members are no longer required. So in instances where a person is sponsoring and there's five other adult males in the room or in the dwelling, none of them need to go through any type of background check at all. So it is a system that is easily abused because there are situations where when reporters go knocking on the doors, they're finding a child unrelated female and male as well, living with five or six adults to whom they are not related. Yeah, and it's unfortunate because now we have traumatized kids with massive debts to cartel. And I guess, you know, cartels don't sue that, but some very creative attorneys do. So no one really dealing with that issue. We have a situation in Indiana, actually, the judges are shocked to see what's happening with some meatpacking plants with child labor. And I think no one even realized until you know, these kids had some violations that they had to go to court system, and it is becoming a huge, huge problem. And I think that shouldn't be a partisan issue. We created child slavery here in this country. We talk about China having slaves. What are we doing in the United States of America with government money? That's unexcusable. And it is a humanitarian crisis in addition to security crisis. You know, and I, you know, I also wanted to see how, you know, as I understand, they have this post-release services, but I hear from some people on the ground that actually sponsor can deny the services. Is that correct? Have you heard that? Uh, yes. Yes, Congressman, that's absolutely correct. And that actually is what contributed to the Marion, Ohio situation, is that a call was made, and then the case was just simply closed. So today, post-release services is absolutely not enforceable. And it would also mean that you have a case manager who's trained enough to know to even activate the post-release services. So just because there's post-release services, it's, it's not required, it is not mandatory, and the sponsor can say, thank you very much, do not call me again, bye. Because there is no authority that HHS has or Office of Refugee Resettlement has to hold the sponsor accountable. And this is what's most baffling. It is a simple fix. The sponsor needs to be held accountable. Why is this a difficult thing? I do not understand. It's the simple, simple fix. Sponsors are accountable. Sponsors are accountable to put the children in school. The sponsor should be accountable to take the child to the immigration hearing. That is what the sponsor signs up for, but that is not what the sponsor is held accountable and there's no legal mechanism to make them accountable. And if that changed, then children would not be trafficked. Well, I appreciate for doing that here. And then, Mr. Chairman, I hopefully we will actually be able to ask the discussion, the, the, this questions from the administration, ORI, and the HSS has to respond to us because this is inhumane, this is irresponsible, and it only benefits cartels that making a lot of money on 
desperate people that come from very poor conditions and American government shouldn't be subsidized and otherwise we're hypocrites when we criticize other countries for doing things like that. I think this should not be a partisan issue. I appreciate you being here today and I hope we can actually find solutions to stand with these children and stop this incentivizes this insanity on the border for national security. So thank you. I yield back.